any patient with a chronic, particularly monoarticular swelling, uh, does require examination as well as the history, history, examination. This gentleman says that the disease is with him for the last few years, but he's more symptomatic for the last about one year. Yes, sir. And when we look at him, he is able to walk, but with great difficulty, with a stick in his hands. Having completed the history, we are on the examination. Obviously, the first examination is in fact inspection, and one can see an obvious wasting of the diseased side as compared to the normal side. And most of the wasting takes place in the muscles and vastus medialis is one muscle which is not covered by any thick structure like iliotibial tract on the lateral side. Wasting probably takes place in all the muscles but the one which is maximally appreciated by a clinician is the vastus medialis. One can see is almost like a hollow area of vastus medialis near the knee joint vis a vis the vastus medialis on the normal side. There is some wasting on the all around the knee joint, but maximum which we can appreciate is on the middle side, especially in diseases of short duration. That is the area which should be inspected more carefully. Having done inspection, then one can start palpating. In palpation, again the same thing. Is the part warmer than the opposite side? Is it only slightly warm or it is very high warm, again all the time comparing with the opposite side and if we touch it with the back of the fingers, it is warm as compared to the normal side. The temperature is raised but not too high a temperature. Then when we again when we start touching the patient, feel if he is tender. I am pressing him fairly hard, he does not wince. In acute infections, he will wince terribly, he will not permit me that much pressure. But here, if I apply too much of pressure, even then he is not wincing. Now that is the character of chronic infections are tuberculosis of the knee joint, even rheumatoid conditions or other inflammatory conditions would produce tenderness. but not that severe as would happen in a septic arthritis or pyogenic arthritis. And when we are palpating, we compare, come from the normal area to the diseased area and one can feel that there is a smooth swelling which looks like the swelling of the soft tissue which means the synovium vis-a-vis -vis the opposite side. It is the synovium that is predominantly thickened. And once you are on the synovium, one palpates it from above downwards, one can actually feel the border. If I were feeling, I would probably put a mark here that here is the maximum swelling or the swelling has extended up to this place, which means the swelling is involving not only the contents of the knee joint, but also in the suprapatellar pouch. Again, every time you compare it with the opposite side, Again, you can see on the medial side of the knee joint, in a normal side, you can see a small depression, medial, on the medial side, almost behind the patella. Here, that retropatellar fossa on the medial side is filled up as compared to the opposite side. Now, we are talking about this area. On the normal side, the left side of the patient, compared to the disease side, the right side of the patient. We are talking about this area, the comparison. So. This is practically flat, whereas this is swollen. Again, uh, you can appreciate the swelling here again, vis-a-vis -vis the lateral side, because here the synovium is covered only by the vastus medialis, which remains muscular right up to the lower end. Now, we are also seeing, on inspection, we are also seeing some ulcers on the lateral side, which is 
distal to the knee joint also some ulcers on the medial side which are medial to the knee joint if you look at these ulcers they look flat ulcers at some place we can see the granulation tissue which is almost reddish but at some places one can see small amount of pus or pustules and this patient is showing a serous discharge coming out of these ulcers serous discharge is usually characteristic of tuberculous infections whereas pyogenic infection in a pyogenic infection that discharge would be like pus this is also a pus but the pus of the tuberculous nature is many a time serous in discharge rather than looking purulent or thick one can see the discharge coming out of it same thing is happening on the lateral side even here we can see an ulcer covered with pale granulation tissue at some place there is a small pustule but appears that the borders of the ulcer they are flat they are flattened the granulation tissue is not protruding out or pouting and this practically is a typical a typical ulcer of tuberculous nature uh, when you move the skin around it one can actually think that probably they are undermined and when you move again you can see the discharge coming out of it which is serous in nature however in examination you want to be more sure you can have a small probe to go around go under the lips of this ulcer you can see that they are undermined edges nice to use a small blunt periosteum elevator or any blunt tissue or a blunt dissector which you can insert on the sides of the ulcer you can see that it can see look at this one how much it's gone inside you can see how much it has gone in I am taking it out so that you can judge it. How much it has gone in? Leave it like this. Yeah, yeah. You can see how much it has gone in, and I am now taking it out so that you can judge it is really gone in. Let him just focus for a second. Yes. Whenever we look at, whenever we, whenever a patient presents with a sinus, we should look at the sinus or the ulcers. in reality most of the ulcers are uh, the termination of a sinus or penetration of the sinus out on the skin in a country like ours whenever we see a flat ulcer start thinking could it be tuberculosis and certain characters of the ulcer are a flattened ulcer thin ulcer pigmented ulcer showing serous discharge and if you probe it gently you can see that many of these ulcers are undermined edges i am pushing in a blunt instrument under the ulcer ulcer margins and one can see almost i can push in almost like 2 cm inside this is very classical of an undermined ulcer undermined margins of an ulcer and probably in this particular patient my probe is almost entering into some sinus so this is a very typical undermined ulcer present in a patient in whom we are suspecting that this could be tuberculosis in nature having done that you can also see the discharge coming out of this ulcer that discharge coming out of the ulcer is almost like a serous discharge and serious discharge again is characteristic of tuberculous infections in pyogenic infections of course you will find a purulent discharge however even in tuberculosis you can have a mixture of serious and purulent discharge because once a secondary infection takes place the discharge from an ulcer can be purulent as well granulation tissue the granulation tissue in tuberculous ulcers are flat they are reddish all right but they are pale red in a pyogenic infection the granulation tissue is red and generally they pout out of the they pout out of the ulcer they just protrude protrude out of the ulcer we call them protruding or pouting granulation tissue these are you know common things but there are so many variations available for many reasons
once you see the ulcers one should look at them see i mean it is a flat ulcer i can see the granulation tissue which is not protruding or the pouting granulation tissue and one starts thinking that this is typically of tuberculous nature now one of the important uh, clinical expression which we talk of tuberculous ulcers or tuberculous sinuses is that the ulcer has an undermined edge ulcers margins are flat they are generally bluish in color and if i can put in a probe be gentle go around it you can see how much it can go in it is going in under the ulcer almost like 2 cm you can I see this one hold for the clarity sir from here it's almost go- it is almost gone in Focus. by about 2 cm and then if you look at the face of the patient even the patient has not complained much about it they are not very painful now this is a very typical tuberculous ulcer undermined edges and when we put in this probe inside it is almost entering so called tuberculous sinuses which would of course reach the place where the disease is present the disease here looks like the disease in the knee joint however the ulcers are formed far away any fluid at tuberculosis of of any infection can find a easy way out away from the joint and many of these ulcers they follow either tendon sheath or neurovascular channels here probably the pus has followed the lateral structures of the muscles and on the medial side also the patient has an ulcer which is practically throwing out a discharging discharge which is almost like a serious discharge you can actually see it it is watery discharge rather than a purulent discharge again even these ulcers are undermined if i show it this way it is not that big but still you can see i am inserting it under the margins this is so characteristic of tuberculous nature palpation again on comparison look at the other side I am able to feel the medial, vascular medialis, vascular medialis, suprapatellar area, the patella, infrapatellar area. Can I see the size of the patella? Here is the size of the patella. I can move it in a in a relaxed position of the knee joint. I can move it lateral to the medial, and similarly when I come to the diseased side. i can feel the patella there is a swelling medial to the patella lateral to the patella even superior to the patella and if i For come the clarity sir please do mark the swelling also now if you see the this is almost the border of the patella uh if i compare it with the opposite side i get a hunch that probably this patella is also bigger than the other side but no matter this is the suprapatellar pouch and it is showing that the swelling is not only behind the patella but also superior to the patella behind the patella you can see the medial fossa is full lateral fossa is full and superior to the patella is the suprapatellar pouch which is full and probably enlarged and if you feel it 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 feels something like doughy feel see it gives you a feel it something like doughy which means almost like dough the dough made out of flour how tender it is when you are pressing how tender it is if you look at the face of the patient it's not very tender i'm pressing fairly hard but he doesn't show tenderness now next step would be pel- um, fluctuation